This is a house plant. This is a house plant. And this is a house plant. And all three were propagated in soil using a method in secret that most professional growers use to propagate most of their plants. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you how you can do it too. It's fast, it's easy, will save you time. And best of all, at the end, I'll share with you what the pros do that you can do to improve your chances of a successful propagation. So let's stop wasting time and get into it. To demonstrate this method, I'll be using this beautiful neon pothos, which I've generously watered a couple days before for to make sure that the plant is hydrated and that it's in its best condition to provide us with cuttings we'll be needing for this propagation. Now as always, I recommend grabbing your sharp pruners and disinfecting them with isopropyl alcohol. We always want to prevent the possibility of spreading disease from a plant we recently cut to this mother plant or to the fresh new cuttings we'll be taking. So it's really important. Now let's take a look at this plant and for this propagation we're going to take three cuttings. Always when taking cuttings try to prune so that the mother plant benefits from it and looks good afterwards. Let's take this one. Now whenever taking cuttings for soil propagation I recommend you keep a few nodes on each cutting. The nodes are these areas where the petiole meets the stem. When you water propagate you can sometimes get away with one node cuttings but for soil I stick to at least two nodes. So to prepare our multiple node cuttings let's take a look at it and visualize where we'll be making our cuts. A cut here for the top and for the bottom of your cuttings make your cut just below a node at a 45 degree angle. Yours should look something like this. And now to finish our cutting off let's remove the bottom leaf. Do the same for the other two cuttings and let's start preparing our soil. There are three components that I prefer to use for propagation, and that's peat, core, and perlite. The peat and core will allow our mix to retain moisture, and the perlite will provide aeration and drainage. I mix these together with equal parts for each component. If you don't have both peat and core, you could substitute with the peat for the core, or with the core for the peat. We're keeping it simple. Most important is that we have something in our mix to hold the water. Now let's choose a pot for this propagation. And the most important part when doing this is to look for one that has drainage holes, and that it's small. The reason we want it to be small is because it'll be a while before the roots of our cuttings fill the container and are able to take up the water in the soil at a rate that will prevent root rot. So for this purpose, I wouldn't go any bigger than a four inch pot. Let's take the pot and fill it with soil and slightly compact the soil so that your cuttings don't fall over when we put them in. Now for pothos, you don't necessarily need rooting hormone as they root relatively easy. But for other plants you might try to propagate, they may benefit from it. I use it here just to show you how to use it and it won't hurt these cuttings. To use the hormone, I recommend you pour a little out on a napkin and dip the cutting into the powder on the napkin. Then toss out the excess hormone and napkin when you're done. Doing it like this as opposed to dipping the cutting straight in the container will help prevent the spread of disease to future cuttings we add hormone to. Now take your cuttings and if you like, grab a dowel and poke a hole in the soil. Put the cuttings in the hole, make sure the node is in the soil, and slightly compact the soil all around. Do this for all your cuttings. If you're using multiple cuttings like we are in this example, space them out in the pot so that when they root in, we'll have a fuller plant. If your soil's dry, I recommend you water the soil until water comes out of the drainage holes. So, we're almost to the part where I share with you the secret that makes this method a success. But before that, let me say this. I know some of you will say, why use this method? When I can just root my cuttings in water and then transplant the rooted cutting to soil. Yes, you can, and I enjoy that method as well. I love seeing the process of the roots growing in the water. I actually have a video to help you with that if you choose to use that method. But propagating your cutting straight to soil provides you with two very important benefits over over water propagation. The first is that you're skipping the step and the work involved with transplanting your water rooted cutting to soil, which in most cases, with most plants, if you want to continue growing your cuttings into beautiful house plants you can enjoy and take even more cuttings from, you'll need to transplant them to soil anyways. So why not skip that step of going from water to soil? Unless you want to see the roots in the water, which I understand. Also, and probably more importantly, by going straight to soil with most plants, you avoid the probability of killing your rooted cutting that can happen when you transplant plant it from water to soil. The roots produced when propagating in water are different than the ones created when propagating in soil. And a lot of would-be happy plant parents have been met with disappointment when making this transition from water to soil. There is a way to increase the success rate for this process of transplanting them, and in a future video I'll share that with you, but there is a risk. So for that reason I share with you the soil propagation method. Now enough of that, let's take our pot and place it in an area with medium to high indirect light, which will help with this propagation, and for our secret we'll use this. 
a glass jar or plastic bottle. This jar or bottle will serve as a greenhouse. In my previous life as a professional nurseryman, I propagated millions of cuttings and structures covered with plastic. This structure or better said greenhouse allowed me to maintain and increase the temperature within the greenhouse, which allowed for a higher success rate. And more importantly, it allowed me to increase the humidity, which again, improves the success rate and applies to what we're doing here now. If you use glass, I recommend every couple days removing the glass for about five minutes to allow some ventilation and reduce the probability of forming mold. And if you use a plastic container, always try to recycle when you can. And if you can, poke a few holes in the top for ventilation. During this time, water the plant when the top layer of soil is dry, which if you cover them, won't be very often. Once your cuttings have roots, then it's okay to remove your covering. At first, when they start to root, and there aren't very many roots in the pot, I prefer to water when the area where the roots are at becomes dry and I water from above, just enough to get down to where the roots are. The clear pot definitely helps to see how much water we're adding. If you're interested, I have clear pots available on my website, I'll put the link in the description. Watering this way will help prevent root rot since the fact that your plant has few roots at this time. So here's the reveal. This plant is about eight weeks and at this time, the roots you can see reach the bottom. And I've started bottom watering to make sure the soil is completely saturated. If you wanna try the soil propagation method, I recommend it. And if you're struggling with water propagation, here's that video I mentioned earlier that'll help you improve your success rate when propagating in water. 